My name is Margot Herman. I'm a resident in internal medicine at Mayo Clinic with an interest in gastroenterology. And I was fortunate to work on this project with Dr. Murray and Dr. Alberto Rubio Tapia, uh, who also are working our celiac disease group. And Dr. Murray is an expert clinician in the celiac disease clinic. When we embarked on this study, we anticipated uh, that there would be sort of a gap in knowledge among clinicians about how celiac disease patients should be followed up. And we also had a perception that most celiac disease patients weren't getting the type of follow-up that was recommended in the guidelines. Celiac disease is unlike many other chronic diseases, such as diabetes or heart disease, in that you can't take an injection or a pill it's a, a chronic disease in which you're going to have intolerance to gluten in the diet for the rest of your life. And really the only treatment for celiac disease is strict avoidance of gluten, um, which can be quite a task for most people as it's a staple food in our diets in the United States and throughout the world. Celiac disease patients also are at risk for some uh, chronic issues such as osteoporosis, anemia, um, Breakthrough symptoms and uh, quality of life can be diminished in those circumstances as well. In our study, we looked at a group of patients uh, from Mayo Clinic who were diagnosed with celiac disease between the years of 1996 and 2006. We ended up with 122 patients with biopsy-proven celiac disease. And what we did was follow those patients. Uh, we were able to look at all of their medical interaction throughout the time period um, for all these people within the entire county, county of Olmsted. Um, this is due to a special resource we have here called the Rochester Ep Epidemiology Project. Uh, because we were able to capture all medical encounters, we were able to look at exactly what type of follow-up these patients were obtaining. We followed them for the five years uh, following diagnosis, starting at six months following diagnosis. What we found was most of these patients really aren't having follow-up, particularly not the type of follow-up that the AGA currently recommends. Their recommendations currently are that patients should have periodic visits with a clinician, with a dietitian, and then also serologies with some regularity using even the most lax uh, interpretation of what those guidelines may mean, uh, two visits in a five-year period and two serologies, we only found that about a third of the patients diagnosed here were having that type of follow-up. We also looked at other things that are often mentioned by expert opinion papers and the AGA in following these patients, such as dietitian visits, uh, bone density scans or DEXA scans, and really the minority of these patients, um, less than 25%, were getting these tests done in that five years following diagnosis. Other studies like thyroid uh, function, anemia assessments with blood counts, et cetera, may have been done with a little more frequency in about half of the patients during that five year period. But still, it was remarkable how little follow up these people were getting. In conclusion, our study points out uh, an area for improvement in medicine, and particularly for these patients in terms of their long-term disease management. It calls for a wider dissemination of the uh, guidelines um, to help promote more, uh, more usage of these guidelines and these practices among primary care providers who see a lot of celiac patients and gastroenterologists. It also highlights a need for more research, and our group plans to continue to research this area, and um, we hope that more knowledge will be obtained in terms of what the barriers are to obtaining follow-up in these patients, and also what follow-up recommendations uh, are evidence-based, and how they will, um, what evidence supports their, their use in, in disease outcome measures.